Good morning. Is false profit a good occupation to choose? Well, we already know the answer, but let's look at this in Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 21 to 23, and see if it confirms our intuition on it. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, concerning Ahab, the son of Kaliah, and Zedekiah, the son of Messiah, who prophesy a lie to you in my name. Behold, I will deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he will slay them before your eyes. And because of them, a curse shall be taken up by all the captivity of Judah who are in Babylon, saying, The Lord make you like Zedekiah and Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire, because they have done disgraceful things in Israel, have committed adultery with their neighbors' wives, and have spoken lying words in my name, which I have not commanded them. Indeed, I know and am witness, says the Lord. So, what would be more offensive to a God of givingness and love than to have some charlatan fake prophets speaking in his name, meeting for their own unselfish ends, and trying to meet their own schemes to take advantage of the people? What would be more offensive than that? What, what things would be on that list by God? Maybe not too many. God's chosen servants need to speak about him accurately. I mean, what they say about him is going to influence what people think. You know, is this a, a kind and generous, peaceful uh, God who means good for me? Or is he just a conniving bad guy like we are? So now true prophets are protected by God, but false prophets don't get any protection. So here we have Zedekiah and Ahab. Now, these, these aren't the Zedekiah and Ahab you, you might think they are. The, we, we don't know anything else about these two individuals, but what we find here in the text. The other ones you're thinking of is somebody else. Now, these men are not keeping God's commandments. They're adulterers. They're misusing their uh, presumed authority, their fake authority, to get uh, at least something going on there with the flesh. Now, in any case, Nebuchadnezzar is going to torture them to death, and it, it sounds like they're going to need some asbestos pajamas, and I don't think that's going to work out too well. They're going to be lost. Now, God who sees all and God who knows all, he, he, he sees what's going on. He's not going to give them any protection. We need to avoid speaking out and for our own agendas. You know, God's in heaven. He's watching. He's watching. He's watching this video. He's watching you watch this video. We need to be very careful to avoid representing ourselves as speaking for him if we're not. Those who speak for him will be judged with a stricter judgment, James chapter 2. But now if we do have a message from him, we must speak it. So Jeremiah had a message from him, and I think it's useful for us to look at it. Let's be careful about doing our own agendas on God's time. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we want to be right we notice, again, Zedekiah and Ahab this time, they're going to be roasted in the fire. What a ridiculous and pompous thing it is to speak on behalf of the high God of heaven just to fulfill our own crazy little agendas. Oh, Lord, please help us to avoid doing things and following a track on our own agendas. Help us to be looking into the Bible and seeing what you have for us, Lord. Help us to be true and allow you to be our guide step by step. Please, Lord. We ask for this in Jesus' name, amen. Solomon's counsel is always best. You know what he says there in Ecclesiastes? God is in heaven, you are on earth, therefore let your words be few. Let our words be very few if they're our own words. And if they're from God, let them be faithful and true. God be with you today in what you're doing as you're living out a Christian life in front of this world that so much needs you to do it.